Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here's your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, everybody. This is Joanne Victoria with another amazing episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. You are here to discover a life of clarity, confidence, sanity, and total life success. Our guest today is Gail Rudolph. Gail is the author of Power Up, Power Down, How to Reclaim, Control, and Make Every Situation a Win-Win. It's her latest book, and... Gail has been working on this topic for a long time. Gail has spent years as an executive professional maneuvering the power dynamics that happen in all interpersonal interactions. One day she had an epiphany. Nobody takes our power, we give it away. And ain't that the truth? The go-to expert on how to harness interpersonal power and create win-win outcomes, Gail's mission is to help those who often feel overlooked, and underestimated. Welcome to the show, Gail Rudolph. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm grateful that you are here. I'm grateful for every guest that shows up because it's your time that you are gifting my wonderful audience and they are grateful and appreciative as well. So when we're looking at what you do, you just say one day you had an epiphany up till that point in time. how How did you deal with power in the workplace and power in your life? Badly. (laughs) Very, very badly. (laughs) Um, You know, I had my moments where I did okay, but I always say that I was born the youngest of four children, my oldest being, you know, 18 years older than I was. So it was like two families, really. And um, from the time I was born, I was always trying to have a voice or be heard or somehow manage this power dynamic because they were off you know, I I was about the same age. I grew up with the grandkids. I was about the same age as my niece and nephew. So I struggled, started struggling with power from the time I was really, really little. And, you know, when I was little, I throw a fit because that's how you got attention and Mm -hmm. hurt. But when you grow up and you get in the workplace, you realize that that's not the way power works. So you have to figure out how do you, how do you manage your own personal power and how do you stay in it? Well, what would you say is, what is personal power? Well, power, basically, the definition is just the capacity or the ability to direct or influence the behavior of other people or the course of event. When we talk about power, I'm talking about a mysterious energy that happens in every interaction that we have. It ebbs and flows. If you've ever been in a room and somebody just enters the room and you know they're there, you know they're powerful. You just don't know why. That's that energy that we feel. Hmm. Okay. I'm trying to visualize. Okay. Okay. So that's, yeah, they have power over the room. I mean, people like that do enter powerful. Right. Right. Because they have power in themselves. A lot of that goes along with how they enter the room, how they Uh, present themselves, how they respond to other people. Many times we see it in celebrities, you know, they'll come in the room and we know somebody that's a celebrity or somebody that's in a position, they will have power when they come into the room. But there are times that people walk into a room and you just kind of look at them and you're like, they possess this kind of interpersonal power and you feel it, you know it. It's kind of like the wind. It's there. You can't see it. You don't quite understand it. But that's the type of power that we're talking about, that interpersonal power that we actually all have and possess, but we don't always know how to tap into it. So how related is this personal power to confidence? Um, it's, it is a little bit related to confidence. I would, I would say it's more um, mindset than confidence. Okay. I think that we confuse confidence and mindset so many times because, you know, I know very, very many or a lot of people, I should say, that are very, very confident. They come into the room and they have what we tend to think of as power, but it's not really power. They're controlling, they're dominating, you know, they're kind of scary. Um, and we actually often think that that's that they're powerful because they have 
those things. But that's not the power we're talking about. We're not talking about people that bully us or that are, you know, uh, have a huge ego or very confident. We're talking about power as the true power, the interpersonal power. And when we view the difference of what real power is and what we perceive as power, I think that it, it makes a big difference on how we can harness our own power. How do we do that? How do we harness, you know, the listeners are listening to this and they're, you know, they've got the title of your book, Power Up, Power Down, and we'll get to that aspect of power in a minute. But how do they harness that? What do they do? I mean, can they read a book besides yours or along with yours? Can they read a book? Is there some a practice they can do? How do they get powerful in a kind way? Well, I think... It- when we talk about power, there are things that you can do, but I think it's an, and I referringly, laughingly refer to them as the power tools that we can actually pull on. My book was actually written as a guidebook so that you could actually draw on different things. Very similar to, you know, taking up more space, like the animal kingdom can be a way of powering up, you know, mm-hmm. how we use our tonalities. But it's important to understand that when we talk about powering up and powering down, it's really both a form of verbal and nonverbal communication. But powering up and powering down are both different sides of the actual same coin. It's all the same coin of power. See, powering up is kind of a choice you make to kind of step in a fuller presence, such as making direct eye contact or taking up space. Powering down is actually intentionally changing your stance, maybe expressing some empathy, getting, giving other people a chance to talk, using a softer voice. It is actually an intentional way of making people feel more comfortable and at ease and of stopping a power struggle. We know that when people get pushed against, they push back. And that's where we get the power struggles that happen many times in our interactions. And when you can go in and use the space between a stimulus and in your response, you choose whether you're going to power up or power down, then actually you can maintain your own personal power. So what happened in your life that made you write the book, had, you know, brought on this epiphany within yourself? You know, were you at work? Was it something that, you know, you were dealing with yourself? Yeah, I um, I remember uh, when I was younger and I worked at a foundation and what happened was I started to begin my struggle with power and I was the full-time associate executive director and I had a part-time executive director uh, male. Now, the way that translated is I did the majority of the work and he got the majority of the credit. <laughs> no, no, we don't want that. So, and then... What happened was I had advanced us about three years. Uh, I I, I had gotten our three years goals in a little over a year. So because we had discussed it when they hired me, I went to him and asked for a raise. He looked at me and he said, well, you don't need a raise. You get child support. Ah, Excuse me. I'm screaming on my podcast. Ah! (laughs) I was a single mom at the time. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what. Uh, You know, being a single mom had to do with the job I was doing there. But I was actually, that's what I was confronted with. I didn't know how to handle it. I mean, I can, I did try. I continued to try to, to to bring him back to my work, but he again, actually, you know, would always come back to, well, you get child support. And ultimately I ended up leaving the organization. Before, Um, did you shoot him? (laughs) Well, they kind of had had their own uh, financial thing because they had to get three people to replace the position that I was doing. Always, that's my experience as well. Yeah. Always, they just don't <laughs> they don't get it how hard working we can be. You know, I mean, they would have financially it would have been better if they'd just given me my raise. But what it taught me was that there was some type of energy there that was happening that I wasn't understanding or I wasn't uh, grabbing a hold of. Now what I know if I went back there, I would handle it completely different. I would take up more space. I'd look him directly in the eye. I would go in really uh, with my uh, list of accomplishments. I wouldn't back down. And I may not or may not 
may or may not have changed the outcome, but I would have walked away feeling differently. I would have walked away still feeling like I maintained my power. And that's what I'm talking about. So many times we give up our interpersonal power. We lose our temper. We don't handle the situation appropriately. We hand over our power or we give in or like I did, we leave. And then we don't feel good about ourselves. But when we talk about power and this personal empowerment, it means that we can feel good about who we are, no matter how the outcome actually comes out. Yes. And I think that's something, these big, you know, aha moments come in different times of everybody's life. And as long as they come, it really doesn't matter because it's, you know, it's a learning experience and you know, you know, I don't want to feel like this again. And you went down deep and you, you know, rooted out whatever it was. And you now know, and you knew then, of course, after soon after that, there was another approach that you could take. And, you know, you know, bravo for you, brava for you for reaching that conclusion, because some people never do. But when that you do, not everybody's born, you're not born with the highest level of all of these uh, accoutrements that come with being a human being. But when you get there, it's like, my God, what have I done to myself all these years? Yes. And and really, when I started coaching individuals around, you know, advancing their careers is when I really could start seeing how this power dynamic actually plays out in any and every interaction we have. Yeah, it's, you know, as you say, you know, you can power up, power down. And even if you power down, that doesn't mean you're giving away your power. That's just another aspect of power. Yes. Exactly. In fact, sometimes I think powering down is is more effective than powering up. So I like to think of people like Martin Luther King, very, very powerful, very, very influential, but he was a master at powering down. You didn't see him, you know, trying to change people's minds or, or dominating over them or raising his voice. He intentionally powered down. He'd get a softer voice and he would make people feel at ease. And that's what powering down is. Powering down is is just as much as being in control as powering up. It's about choosing how you're going to respond to somebody for the ultimate outcome you have. It goes back to that definition of power, right? It's the capacity or ability to direct or influence behavior of others or a course of events. And when we see Martin Luther King, he influenced the course of events. Well, I know that it is a trick for people who act on stage is to lower your voice as much as possible to not only get the audience to lean forward and listen to what you're trying to say or attempting to say. And, you know, if you want to screw up one of your co-actors, <laughs> because that would be a, a problem. Oh, it's bet I, I was in a little theater for a long little theater. How, what a stupid terminology. I was in local community theater equally as bad, but um, that's what you do. You know, it's, it's a trick, but you can get your people. People will pay more attention to you if you lower your voice than if you raise your voice. Yes. And I think for women, our voices tend to be higher pitched anyway. Um, but if we lower our voice and slow down our speech, we can change the way people hear us. You see, we have no control over other people. We can't change other people or even sometimes the situation, but we do have control over ourselves and how we respond. And that's what we're talking about is taking that, shifting from that habitual reaction state to being able to do a thoughtful response. I wrote the book as a guidebook, which is why it has power up attributes you can do and power down attributes. And I tell people, take one or two of each and practice them and then add some more. And it becomes second nature after a while when you decide that you want to be a powerful person. And it, and you can do it starting tomorrow, starting in the next five minutes. Sure. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Once you give people the tools, they can start making a difference. You know, not we don't know everything or we don't know what we don't know. And for something like this, this mysterious energy that ebbs and flows, and I still want to stick more with you talking about that, but we don't know. You know, we just act the way we act all the time in those 
semi-confrontational situations or totally confrontational situations. And who wants to confront? I mean, it's like that's a war. You're setting up a war right there. That's negative to me. Con- the word con- con- I can't even say the word con- con- confrontation. Yeah, it's um, and and what happens is we just naturally tend to go there. Yes. We naturally tend to do that because we, we don't understand that this law and this, uh, uh, the power of energy, it's limitless. It's at our disposal at any given point in time. And we can grab it and we can decide to harness the situation and harness our own personal uh, power in any and every situation. And it's when you start actually becoming aware of the energy that's happening, then you can actually change the way you respond to it. So just the awareness in itself makes a big difference. Yeah, and which is not always easy when you're in a situation that needs handling now. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you're not, a, sometimes you're not aware that you're in the situation before you're in the situation. And then you have to, it's hard to pull back. It is. That's why I tell people to to get a few of the power tools and to start watching. One of the best ways to learn about power is to observe people. Go to a restaurant, sit down, watch watch the people across the room or go sit at a coffee shop and watch people having conversation. And you'll start seeing how the power, actually the energy goes back and forth. It's kind of like the wind. You can feel it. You can kind of see it, how, it, how other people are reacting. And um, then you can start like looking at how you can do different things. When I first started coaching people around this, it was a brand new concept to them on how do I harness my power? How do I, and I was in the business setting, how do I, how do I stand up to my boss and not get myself in trouble? You know, how do I, how do I take control of a situ- situation? And I had uh, one lady that I worked with. She was amazing. Her name was Kelly and she was trying to get a promotion and she was very, very, very good at her job, but she was getting mixed messages from her boss, you know, telling him at one time, you know, we need, you need to up your, your competency. And at the next time saying she wasn't, you know, her, her team, she needed to work on her team skills. And she was getting these mixed messages every time she went in and she was working with her boss on and with me and was, was put on a special project. So she and her boss went out to dinner with a group of people it just so happened she happened to be the only female at the mm-hmm. stair. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now her boss, without thinking, and I honestly believe he didn't mean anything by it. He said to the group of people, well, Kelly is here to take notes. <gasps> now, Kelly. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Why do you <laughs> think he didn't mean it? I, I don't think he did. I think he just, people say things, they get caught up in the moment. They don't know how to do it. I don't think he was intentionally pushing her down. I think it was just one of those things. When we learn about our fast brain and our slow brain, sometimes we react to things and we don't always think about it. It's just a fast brain response. It's kind of just the way we interact. But Kelly was prepared for it this time. See, in the past, she would have been extremely, extremely upset. She, her face would have gotten red. She would have sat there and pouted. She would have been angry. She would have went home. It would have disrupted her completely. But Kelly knew how to respond this time because she understood that she stood in her personal power, no matter what he said or how he approached it. So Kelly said to the group, that's right. I'm taking notes because I'm building the strategy for this project. So I may interrupt you and I may ask you to speak louder because I want to make sure and get the absolute best strategy we can so we have a successful project. So he probably just fell down in his chair. He didn't do it. I mean, it, it because, and this is why I think he didn't mean anything by it. The next day he called Kelly in and said, hey, we need to talk about your raise. I really was impressed the way you handled yourself last night. Mm-hmm. But see, she maintained her personal power. She would have given it away had she just sat there and fumed about it. Well, of course. And what we don't understand is that there's always ways to harness our personal power. And it, she didn't confront her boss. She didn't call him out for what he did. She didn't get angry about it. 
She started to, but then she remembered me in the back of her head. She said, I heard your voice, Gail. And she said, I just decided I was going to pick the power up attributes. She spread out at the table. She ended up making direct eye contact. Sometimes she got up and walked around the table so she could hear better, kind of stood up over the gentlemen that are there. She interrupted them and had them repeat themselves. Those are all power moves, but she needed to do it for her job, but it was also she could maintain her own personal power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she didn't do it to control anybody. She didn't do it to dominate or to be bullying. She did it to get the best outcome and to remain in her own personal power. I'm still burned by him saying that. (laughs) <laughs> she's uh she's got a very nice uh new position now so she Good. she's burned by Good. she learned something in that whole process because she came back and she said before i would have given my power away because i would have gotten upset but by being self-aware of myself and moving to a a response instead of a reaction she said i was able to step into my power and she said you know I left that night knowing how I was going to feel. Right. I I chose that going in. Well, I want to remind the listeners, and I do this once or twice in just about every uh, episode. When this episode is over, get your pen and paper and take notes. Because this lesson that Gail Rudolph has presented to you about Kelly And, you know, she didn't commit murder. I would have come close. Uh, But I understand what she is saying. You know, my my instant reaction is to lash out. And that's probably what Kelly might have done at another time or you, the listener, might do. So listen to this. This is a huge, huge lesson that Gail Rudolph is presenting to you. It's an opportunity to use it as it is or reframe it for your own life. But see the way that you use your power to power up. And how, you know, Kelly powered down and she still had more control than anybody else in the room. It's it's amazing how these things work. I I have a little fun with them, I have to admit. You know, I'll go to the car dealership and I'll decide that I'm going to power up or power down only on the new the moves and the things that I put in the book. And it is unbelievable how things happen and, and energy changes and how people are willing to help and work with you by just remaining in your personal power and allowing them to remain in their personal power. Yeah, that's the key. You know, you don't, it's this one upmanship is the problem. And I think that happens a lot. So, uh, people who are listening, you can find anything out about Gail Rudolph at gailrudolph.com. That's G A I L R U D O L P H dot com. And Gail is also on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook as Gail Rudolph or Gail Rudolph Author. So, Gail, uh, let's talk about, you had something to give our audience. What do you have? We actually, uh, one of the things that I talk about when it comes to personal uh, bound or personal power is boundaries because boundaries are just simply limits we set around our time energy and money and so many times we don't hold our own personal boundaries and it's a way that we give up our power so if you go to uh, power power up power down.com name of the book um, you will find there uh, a boundary inventory that you can take to see how well you are at holding your boundaries you'll also find the power up power down attributes that I talked about that you can do and replace your responses or your reactions to responses and you uh, there's a couple of other tools there that you can get and I really want my my goal is for everybody to harness their personal power and be the best versions of themselves they can be that's why these tools are free to you well actually this would probably help with a lot of people's current issue of depression and I think that people are depressed. I, I'm not a psychologist or anything like that. I'm just saying, if you have lost your power, your personal power, or it is in question, you know, you you tend to go down the tube and you become depressed. Ultimately, you become depressed. And you need the help that Gail Rudolph has written about and is telling you about on her power up, powerdown.com page. 
is to find some tools because you can't just, you know, there's been a recent uh, array of commercials on TV. I don't know if you've seen them, Gail, but, you know, where there's somebody who's talking about their depression and about the responses they may get. Obviously, all fiction, but it's all based on truth. Where somebody right. said, oh, you'll get over it, or just, you know, time passes, or make some cookies, and, you know, do something uh, silly in order to, you know, conquer your depression. That's not it. It's not going to work. You need tools. And what Gail Rudolph is providing you is tools, you know, you can see what your, where your boundaries are, how you let other people cross them, how it affects you, regain a little bit of your power, and then find a therapist. You know, I like to think of power. The, the simplest and easiest way is to, to harness your power by taking up more space. As women, we tend to sit with our legs crossed at the table or sometimes our arms crossed, taking up as little space as we can. So I encourage people to take take a lesson from the animal kingdom. Um, I, I talk about a peacock in the book, right? You can go full feathers or you can have your train tucked in and choosing which one you want to be. But so many times we default to the train tucked in. And sometimes just taking up more space wherever we're at makes a big difference. And um, I think that that helps when we can actually do something with our body, our tone of voice and put some action behind it. Mm -hmm. I think it helps us understand that our power is right there to be able to grab. There we go, people. I want to thank Gail Rudolph for being here today and talking about her book, Power Up, Power Down, How to Reclaim Control and Make Every Situation a Win-Win. It's available everywhere, Amazon, etc., because that's all you need to know. Amazon is the place to find more books than you thought were even written. And as I say, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I want to thank Gail Rudolph for being here today because this has been very interesting. And I know the listeners have are grateful for your appearance today. Have a well, wonderful have a wonderful rest of your book tour if that's what you're on. And um, I'm grateful that you were here. This is good, good data. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to share this with your audience. And I hope that everybody walks away feeling empowered today. I appreciate that. And I'm sure they do too. Take care, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com to listen to more podcasts. Check out Joanne's coaching programs and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life-Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.